Hey everybody and welcome to episode 15 of Big Game Talk with Brad and Chris. I'm Brad, that's Chris over there. We got another quarantine episode for you. We're going to talk some more MLB realignment plans, hoping to get that season going. We got some UFC talk as they're coming back, like you heard last week with our interview with Sam Alvey, and some other stuff down the line like NASCAR, and our first Phoenix fan of the week with some sports hypotheticals. Oh, it's going to be great. And if you want to skip ahead, say you're into MLB, not into UFC or vice versa, you want to find the sports content you're looking for, timestamps are in the description down below. Just click them, jump around, skip around, find the content you want. Now hit the music. All right, so before we get into the news, I feel like we're going to give the weekly quarantine update. So anything changing for you, Chris? Well, I went back to work at the grocery store, and, man, it has changed. Like, it, things are wild. They got the glass up everywhere. Like, I feel like a fish in a fishbowl or, like, one of those. I wanted to put up a sign. It was like, don't tap on the glass. The gorillas get angry, um, something like that. But, uh, yeah, it's like being in the zoo. It's you mean that you mean you you went back to your second job though. This is job number one. This is job number one. This is the primary source of income. <laughs> definitely, um, we're making big money. And not that I need to work a second job because this podcast is just so successful. Uh, I just like the human interaction. Fair enough. Fair <laughs> enough. And if you want to support us a little more, so maybe Chris doesn't feel like he needs to go to that. Just you know, down here. Yeah, down there. You know, follow us and stuff. You know, send us some money. You know. <laughs> give me the human interaction that i get from the grocery store like us on twitter and stuff yeah for me nothing changes quarantine same shit different day yeah that's fair that's fair just ready for it to end like a beautiful day today like we're mm-hmm. recording this on saturday so that was a beautiful day wake up so nice out wearing shorts all i want to do is just roll the windows down play some classic rock music drive to a blue jays game and get absolutely hammered with the boys that's all i want to do yeah no it's i'm missing the like man we had so many plans like i know you had a busy summer but we had plans for games for football games in the spring like or in it's sorry in the in the in the fall like we were so hyped for this summer and then just boom like coronavirus comes in shuts it down like it's just i mean i wish this stuff happened earlier and it was in the winter and yeah. when this all happened, because then we could just be holed up inside all warm. But now it's going to be even harder to keep people inside. It's just so beautiful well, pe- out. People aren't going to stay inside. That's no, the people problem. Aren't. And, and I mean, I think it's generally pretty safe to be going for a walk, go to the, like, I mean, parks are, a lot of parks are closed. But like, you know, if you're just in a field playing soccer with, with, with your family or something like that, that's going to work, I think. But uh, it's going to be hard to keep people um, from like remaining social distance it's i mean it's getting harder and harder people are i'm missing this as i said like i went back to the grocery store for the social interaction man i hadn't had conversations with people and that wasn't brad or uh or you know the ufc legends that we've been uh interviewing recently and man it was weird though it was it was strange like i my conversation skills have been stunted like people would look me in the eye and i just like freak out because it's like oh my goodness i'm making eye contact with the person random stranger like it was strange and you want you through the glass so it's just like it's very weird very weird um and also to one thing too about this quarantine stuff is some news came out. I play in, a, in the South Hastings Baseball League. Shout out to anybody in that league that listens to this podcast. Mm-hmm. But we're this was supposed to be the 87th year in a row they were running. Mm-hmm. And they might not be able to have a game because of this. Man, that's not So that safe. would be eighty the 87 years in a row. Like, that's through both world wars. Or mm-hmm. Was it 87 years ago the war, first world? I don't oh, even know. Don't make me do math. I, yeah, yeah. I think 87 was one. Okay, I mean, World War One ended in, in like 1918, I think. Okay, so, so it's just, just the, the second one. But, but I like mean, the fact that they, they haven't shut down for anything, and mm-hmm. we, might have to, we might not be able to run a game this year. It's nuts. These, these are just wild times, like unprecedented. Like that's what unprecedented means, right? When a league that's been running for 87 years is thinking about, I don't know, maybe we, we can't do this. And I mean, it's hard, right? Because like if you're the MLB – um, if the MLB is in question and the MLB has just the money's there, the like all the experts are there. I mean, South Hastings League is pretty big deal. It's it's a pretty big deal. Let me reiterate, big deal. 
but MLB in the grand scheme of things has a lot more resources at its hands to be testing people and yeah, all that. And, sure. you know, no, I'm yeah. not, it's not a knock. I'm just saying the facts. No, I'm I'm saying saying but yeah, like, obviously the only thing that's just like, it, it's just, it's just wild. It's like really unprecedented. Like everything yeah. that is happening. You're just like, Holy shit. Like I never thought that like it would get this bad. And then it's like, goes yeah. past that. it just goes all like, I mean, it's, it's crazy times. Like, and I mean, every, I mean, the States, uh, Georgia's opening up. So we're going to have to see what happens with Georgia um because they're really kind of the the guinea pigs they've kind of volunteered uh well at least the governor's volunteered to be the kind of the guinea pigs so um states are going to start opening up canada's i mean where we are i think their leaders a little bit more like trudeau has been very kind of cautious so i think it's going to be whatever happens in the states add like a couple months to canada because um they're just taking a different approach for better or for worse um but so it's it's yeah it's rough to see and and i mean like i've gone to a few south hastings league games and they they're just they're spectacles like the whole town shows up like it's and 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 all across canada all across like america there's these sports leagues um any sport and they there's staples in the community and, and and that's really the thing um like for a lot of people that's your night out you go to you go watch the the south hastings baseball league whoever like you don't maybe not, don't even know anybody in the in the league. You just go because it's part of what the community does, right? Yeah, and I appreciate you, multi- you hyping up the league because you I multiply. Know for, I don't know for that spectacular. Well, okay, <laughs> I multiply that across every. You know, it's a, it's an important no, it, part it, of exactly. Yeah, it, uh, it, it's uh, honestly too just for people's like mental well being to be able to go out, mm-hmm. do things, and especially to be active, play sports. Yeah, like, I I know for me that like I, I have to be active. Mm-hmm. for for my own mental well-being and just like being holed up in the house just going from here to work is is not cutting it so yeah it's like trying to get out for walks and shit like that it's, every gym's closed mm-hmm. it's and, it's it's tough out here yeah and i think about like down the street from me we they built a few years ago they built like a huge sports complex like it has the velodrome so like for the cycling it's mm-hmm. like one of those professional cycling things but then they have like really amazing sports complex like i've gone and played badminton there volleyball sometimes basketball it's like it's pretty good and there's Yo, do people, they have racquetball i'm pretty sure they have racquetball which we are Yo, going to have we, to get on yeah i'm coming We're, to i don't know if i'm allowed to say where you live milton ontario <laughs> baby yeah as soon as this is done to play racquetball yeah i don't yeah. know if i didn't know if you were cool with me just blurting that out <laughs> yeah no i dude i'm i'm basically a celebrity i just have to accept that like i'm gonna blow up milton like milton's gonna blow up because like once once everybody gets once these twitter gets rolling people are gonna there's gonna be like a milton celebrity map you know how in california you go and there's like maps to celebrities houses if there's gonna be one from milton and it's just gonna be my house we dream in big, <laughs> but yeah. anyways, that's why we yeah, call like, big game talk because we're yeah, dreaming big. We're dreaming big, but uh, and we talk a big game and it doesn't really always pay off. But anyways, what I'm saying is at this sports complex, like you go and there's people that just go eight o'clock every morning, play badminton for two hours. Like you, you play like with random people, so you're making friends with random strangers. You you start to play them over time. Like people keep like tournaments, like they have like. Like, oh, I'm like, I'm six and 10 against that person or something like, like to keep track and all that. So you got these relationships forming and now boom, all that's done. Uh, it's just a real shame. It's yeah, like, it really is. Um, it's and the thing shame. is too, is like, are people going to be scared to go back after this and do things like that? Yeah. Even once this is cleared out of fear of similar things in the future. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's interesting to see. I'm, I think like when you talk about like, let's say Roger Center opens up Blue Jays games again. Um, people are going to go right away because there's enough people to fill the seats mm-hmm. that act, that don't care or are, are like, we've, I've waited this long. I'm going to go and I'm going to be a part of history this way. But for like some of the smaller things like the local sports complex or the movie theater, especially, I think movie theaters, like they don't come back from this. A lot of them. Um, you know, Cause like, people realize that you can just, like you, you a lot of people are already realizing you just stay at home and watch movies and now it's like now you have an even better excuse not to go because the viruses and stuff like yeah that. and i mean universal like is in like a, a fight with a bunch of uh now this is going off the beaten trail but universal's in a fight with a bunch of 
um, movie theaters because they're like the movie theaters are saying Universal releases their movies out too like that that Trolls movie apparently Trolls was a huge hit yeah. but anyways the the Trolls movie they put it out to DVD and like online like distributors way like super quick after putting it out in the theaters yeah. and the movie theaters were like well like where's our exclusivity you know and uh, and now Universal is just like is being banned from move, a bunch of movie theaters. So the universal is going to be like, okay, we'll just put our movies right on Netflix. And yeah. it's, and it's like the movie theater, like the, the, the movie theaters are just cutting off their nose to spite their face. Like it's just, yeah. uh, and, and then with you add the coronavirus stuff and they're, they're done. Yeah. And I mean, the one good thing about movie theater shutting down is bed bugs won't be as big of a problem. They won't be spread as easily. Yeah. Because bed bugs come from movie theaters. Yeah. That's right, Ben. <laughs> Anyways, let's move into the MLB news. Okay, so we got... Yeah, let's actually start talking about sports here. Yeah, let's actually start talking about sports. All right, so new reallocation plan. Like I said, we had one before, and it was talking about moving the teams to Arizona and Florida, splitting up Grapefruit and Cactus League. Yeah, yeah, we've been through that. So now we got a new one. So the feature of this, you're going to smash the AL with the NL. So... Um, 10 team divisions so you put the NL East with the AL East and and that for the Central and the West so it's basically just That's absolutely fire for us though Mets and Blue Jays matchups yeah. I'm saying we gotta we gotta get on zoom for these maybe do a little live stream and watch those together mm -hmm. that's gonna be unreal that's gonna be because I mean the Mets play the Blue Jays like once every three years like it's it, it's so rare Yep. Um, so it's, and, and every time it's so exciting. Cause I mean, I, me living in Canada, I have no, like most of my friends are Blue Jays fans. So there's finally a little bit of time for, for some rivalry there. Um, because I mean the Mets and the Blue Jays, like they, they're so indifferent of each other. It's hard to talk smack. Like the only thing you can talk about is how the Mets totally destroyed the Blue Jays in the R.A. Dickey trade. Um, so that one's, that one's a, a little feather in my cap and how the Mets went deeper in, in 2015 than the Blue Jays. But you know, um Brad's yeah, just... yeah, yeah like <laughs> no, I mean what do I even say back to that yeah, yeah exactly yeah, you got Noah Syndergaard and we got a 40 year old knuckleball exactly I, I do I do exactly. love R.A. Dick I, I love the guy mm -hmm. but I would have that's it's such a bad trade just, it was such yeah a bad trade. so anyways so so maybe if the Blue Jays do a little bit better against the Mets in this reallocated season you'll have a little bit of ammo because right now it's just me with a machine gun, it just blah, 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 and you're just like with a with a potato shooter, um, trying to trying to kind of go back and forth as a Blue Jays to Mets fan. Um, but anyways, so you got that going on. So teams are going to play in their home stadiums. So that's the big thing about this real allocation. And part of the the thing with the with the um, all the division well, changes. Okay. So when you, when you say something like this with the home stadiums. Yeah. Or is this, does that include the Blue Jays? Because what if the borders are still shut down? Yeah, that is – that I have that I, – oh, I forgot to put that – I have a pros and cons list, and I forgot to put that down because that is – um, we're forgetting about Canada. That's a huge thing, especially if – like – because, I mean, this is talking about starting this in June. So if it's a situation where the U.S. is starting to open up, Georgia open, – as we said, Georgia is opening up lot, like this week. States are starting to follow. We'll see the results of that. And yeah. that is all working towards a June, a late June start for the MLB. But if okay. Canada, as we've, I've said before, like earlier, like if Canada is like a month or two behind, um, just because the leadership's head is in a different spot, um, it really puts into question where the Blue Jays are going to play. Um, that's a great point. Um, and I think that, I think that is going to be one of the biggest logistical um, nightmares. They may just say, ah, just like, get rid of the blue jays i don't know well, i would i would i would think that they would probably stay in uh florida yeah no that's fair that's fair or i mean they could even play like um in buffalo yeah facts I, I, yeah buffalo's buffalo or florida either or yeah yeah i think well i think um yeah because that would still be in that both would be in that eastern kind of division so you're not messing up the travel um yeah. with that i think that Either, would, yeah because like, in, in buffalo is where the triple a team is and yeah. florida is where their spring training and, and a team is and they have a beautiful stadium there uh the coca-cola field in buffalo oh, it's yeah? really nice it's yeah really, have you been i've never been to it That's yeah, some, i, I, I went to a game to. once like it's really nice there so like i think they could do it and especially if you don't have any fans like you're not restricted by how big the seats are but the field itself is really nice like it would look great on tv like they got the highway 
right? Like over, so there's just cars passing by, like in the past the outfield, like on like kind of a bridge thing. So it's actually really kind of cool. Um, yeah. I think it would work really well. Um, wow. So uh, teams playing in home stadiums without fans, of course, this like really fixes the big problem with the last real allocate realignment plan, mm-hmm. which was, I mean, you're going to be playing in Arizona and Florida outside in August, which is absolutely brutal. It's doable, but it's brutal. Um, there's a reason all the teams that play in those States play inside during the summer. Uh, and now you're expecting the whole league to play every single game. Like, you know, it's not like you're, you get a road game in Chicago and you get out of the heat a little bit, you're staying there for an extended period of time. And I would think too, that like the extreme heats are going to like, you're going to sweat out all your stuff. You're going to weaken your immune system. You would be more susceptible to catching. The that's a great point too. You, that's a great point. The immune, immune system uh, is important. Dangerous. You're what's that? You're just, bah, you should have made this like, <laughs> But anyways, <laughs> um, so as I said, could start as early as late June. Uh, and right. then, of course, with the 10 team divisions, you can't just take one winner and a wild card from each um, because then that would be, I mean, like if you were a middle of the pack team that was looking yeah. to kind of sneak in a, in a playoff berth uh, this season, you're totally screwed because now you have yeah. twice the competition. So they're, they're going to, they haven't talked about how they're going to extend it, but I imagine um, like, cause in the original shout video, out episode six, yeah, what we the, did where I said about the expanded playoff, I think it was episode six. <laughs> I remember like well, we three, talked about that, know. didn't Yeah. Maybe it was a while ago. We talked yeah. about that though, didn't we? Yeah, we did. We talked yeah. about, but that was when they were talking about a regular season. Like that was before coronavirus. That was when we were thinking we're going to have a normal season and they were talking about just like let's straight up mess up the playoffs for no reason, right? Like, um, or not for no reason. I mean, there's reasons, but like let's just do this for the yeah. sake of doing this. It's not like oh, we're trying to figure out how to even have a season. Like yeah. it's just been a wild ride for big game talk in our first 15 episodes. Yeah, exactly. Um, but uh, man, so we so oh, what was I saying? Um, but the extended standard uh, extended playoff, so, yeah. like uh, that's. that's like has to happen. Yeah. And, and I think like in the original real allocation plan, like they were floating the idea of just letting all 30 teams into the playoffs and having an ex- really extended playoff season with a shorter season, longer playoffs, um, which I think I would be an interesting thing to try out. Um, yeah. If, it'd be, uh, this year, because everything's so weird. Yeah. I, I'd be okay with it. Mm-hmm. But it's just like, that's, it's such, it's a, such a stupid idea, but like everything's yeah. so stupid right now. It probably work. I th- yeah, I think it's one of those things like this is the tester year. Why not throw up stuff on the wall, see what sticks? Mm-hmm. And like, and I'm, my fear is that this is going to be like, this is an opportunity to say, okay, we're like in the name of making this possible, we're going to make a bunch of changes that never go away. You know, um, that is the, I think that's the danger. I think that applies to government. Uh, if you want to think politically, like at this time, like, but it really applies to sports too. Um, all the powers that kind of get get instilled to kind of makes yeah. things possible in the coronavirus era, if they stay around, um, they're here forever, right? Like once you open up the gate, the gate's like, open. The one big thing is that they're going to mash the divisions together. They're, they're going to put DH across the board, and then the DH is going to be forever. The DH is going to be yeah. This is this is the chance, the opportunity. I mean, the players' union wants it um the like the league kind of wants it everybody um, but you i think wants every, i think everybody but me and, and and a select few managers don't want it apparently i don't know um but you know it's it's going to be like this is the opportunity to do it to make the move um this is and, and also too for people that like you that don't want it it's an opportunity for you to kind of live it to see how it is yeah and, and so, you might like it i uh, I wouldn't hold your breath, Bradley, but uh, we'll have you're to gonna see. love it, and you're just gonna talk on this like you hate it, just to never let me win that battle. Well, okay, here's the thing. Here's what I'm actually kind of afraid not afraid of, but I'm like the one thing that like will make me like want it mm-hmm. is the Mets have like this would be like the best possible season for the Mets to have a DH because you got Cespedes get that like drunken sailor out of the the outfield like. He's out here playing kickball with the ball half the time. Like, yeah, he's yeah. got a great gun, 
but usually it, like when he guns somebody out at the plate, it's because he's made an error allowing a guy to round third and then he guns him out at the plate. That's like the best case scenario, Cespedes in the outfield. Every other time he's making errors and doing stupid things. So get him out of there, get his bat in the lineup or you got Cano, Cano, right? Cano. exactly. Yeah. And that, and I think that is like Cespedes is the, the, when Cano's feeling good, Cespedes the age, but then when Cano needs every like every other game, get him, get his, take it easy on his knees, uh, get him out of the infield, put in. I mean, the Mets got so many great uh, utility guys that that don't hit like Robinson Cano um, mm-hmm. that you can put in some great gloves out there um, and then just stick them in second base like that. I mean, that if anything's gonna sway me to the DH, that's what it's gonna be. That yeah. like that's what's gonna happen. Um, but yeah, I love it when you sit here and just argue my side of the argument for me. (laughs) Yeah. Well, okay. Sometimes like sometimes arguing with you gets a little bit boring. So I got to just, I got to do the work for you, you know? (laughs) Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, but so, um, the expanded playoffs season, like, I think that would be, I think if you're going to do a gimmick, like that is this is the time to try it one time only, and especially with the ten teams. Like that's such a that's a, like if, imagine if they had one team makes the playoffs, and or no, it wouldn't even work because then you'd have three, four, no, you'd have six teams in the. Yeah. So it'd no, be, it'd be it'd be three. Like, are you saying ten team divisions? Three divisions with ten teams. Yeah, so there only be three teams when you make like that. Just, that just wouldn't work. No, yeah. Well, then if you had a wild card, then it'd be six, and then it still wouldn't work. So, um, yeah, I'm, I don't understand how your math gets to six, three to six teams with one wild card, but with oh yeah yeah, yeah one wild card yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> so it'd be four with a wild card. Yeah, four with a wild card Which, wouldn't work. Yeah, it wouldn't work because you'd, you'd be like a semifinal in the World Series. Yeah, doesn't yeah. work. No, that would be. And, and, like, it'd be nice, you know, like, imagine, like, a six-round, like, playoffs. Like, do it, like – Unreal. Do it, like, hockey. Like, that Hockey's would be – Hockey's not six rounds. Hockey's what four is hockey? rounds. Four. Hockey's four rounds? Quarters, semis, conference, championship. Oh, man. I'm, I'm The hockey people are going to be so angry at me, but – yeah. Um, yeah. But hockey just seems like a, it just seems so long the playoffs because they do the seven round series every. But like, hockey, like hockey, also puts on one of the, the best playoffs as well. Yeah, you know, that's that's fair. It's just it's very like long. Play, they're like uh, playoff hockey is arguably like the best sport you can watch. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the best sport you can watch. Just wait, wait till Brad's answer for the sports hypothetical, and he'll just contradict that. <laughs> no, I, I, I said <laughs> arguably. I said arguably. Okay, arguably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're foreshadowing a bit here, but I'm gonna argue <laughs> my answer later even better. <laughs> okay, okay. Yo, uh, st- stay tuned, everybody. Brad's gonna gonna really. And we haven't recorded that yet, so I could really heel turn here too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you're welcome. If you heel turn, you're welcome for that tip. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> pros and cons for the realignment plan this is what i thought you keep the natural rivals together um you'll be with your usual division mate mates like because mm-hmm. the, the i mean the original uh al like uh, the uh plan with the grapefruit and the and the cactus like that just kind of mixed everything up like you still kind of had the mets and nationals and so on and so forth but yeah. um you mix things up a little bit. Now this keeps everybody together. So if you really love to hate the guys in your division, you get to still love to hate them, which is, I think a really big plus. Um, and, and I mean, a That's lot of teams are. Are, are kind of building their teams to kind of really play their division rivals. So you kind of maintain that. And then you yeah. add the cross town state, like slash cross state rivals, you put them together. So the Mets and Yankees are going to be in a division together. That's going to be unreal. Like that is going to be off the charts. You got the Cubs and the White Sox in a division together. You got the uh, the Rangers and the Astros together. Like it really kind of ups that cross. Like for the first time ever, these guys are going to be competing for the playoffs against each other, which is huge. Like that's going to be unreal. Um, yeah, it's going to be it's going to be awesome. Yeah. And, and I mean, as we've said, like we're I think most excited if this happens. Now this is still a proposal. We should say that I forgot to say that. Now this is just a plan. This is mm-hmm. like this is just they're throwing out throwing something up the flagpole, seeing who salutes. 
Um, but I mean, Jay's blue, Jay's mats is going to be unreal, off the charts. Um, and and the the funny thing is the Jays and the Mets won't know it, but we'll be sitting there like this is unreal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're, we're we're probably one of the only friendships that's a Blue Jays Mets fan. Mm -hmm. like both, because I, I would I would think that's pretty uncommon. Yeah, no, that's probably pretty uncommon. Because I mean, yeah. if you're going to be in Canada and you're going to be a New York fan, you're probably Yankees. As yeah. much as it, I hate to say that, but yeah, um, yeah, you're probably right there. Yeah, yeah, and I, there's no Blue Jays fans in New York. Yeah, and and the fu the funny thing is like I'll see like anytime like I've probably seen like three Mets fans over the course of my lifetime in Canada, and like every time like I would see them, I'd be like, "Let's go Mets!" And then we spend like ten like stop in the street and just talk about the Mets for fifteen minutes. We're so excited to meet another fan. And then every once in a while, like most of the time, you'll see a guy with a Mets hat and you'll be like, hey, like, let's go Mets. He's like, what? I'm like, your hat. And he says like, oh, like, I just thought the hat was cool because it's like the NY is it, there's some street cred that comes with it. Right. So most people in Canada wearing Mets gear are they just think the hat's cool. So anytime I'm in New York and I see somebody with Mets gear and I'm like, lose my mind. I'm like, oh, another Mets fan. Let's go. And then they're just like, what? Like, we're in New York. It's like everybody's a Mets fan you know like it's just it's very strange it's very strange anyways we're we're going off the beaten trail in this podcast I, I, yeah I like a little it. bit uh, but anyways so pros uh there would be at least if we start in late june there'd be at least 100 games in this season which i mean is the best we could get at this point um yeah. without i mean I, i'd be happy with that 100 and, and you could do that without trying to like do like double headers every like two double headers on a Saturday Sunday like you wouldn't have to really go if you start late June like you wouldn't have to go two knots to to hit a hundred games and still have a playoffs like that doesn't go into to Thanksgiving American Thanksgiving um yep. so that that's no, a, uh, that that would I'd be happy with that if that's, that's a huge that's a huge pro like that is mm -hmm. like this is I mean this seems like very too good to be true which makes me sad but like if we if we're gonna dream well, let's... Hey, yeah i mean like if things start getting better like they mm -hmm. can figure it out and there's yeah. enough money involved that they're gonna put all their effort in figuring it out yeah yeah so and then baseball would be one of the first sports to start up again so that's mm -hmm. incentive for the league to really kind of get get their ass moving on this because i mean imagine baseball is the only sport on tv every day like that would be a huge boom for the sport if yeah. you're you're all always talking about getting young fans in, getting new fans, like that's been the big push for Rob Manfred, and this is really the opportunity to kind of throw a hail mary and uh, and get people involved, and even like for the fan, like for the casual fan, uh, 162 games is a long season. I, I don't want it to go anywhere, but if if it's kind of like oh, like I really like hockey, hockey's not on right now. I really like basketball, basketball's not on right now, and there's. I only have to kind of invest for a hundred games of baseball and it's actually sports on TV. That's yeah. a good sell. That's a pretty good sell. Um, with an, yeah, cause baseball's got a really bad reputation for people perceive it as being boring, mm -hmm. but if you give them a little bit of shortened season, they give them like that incentive to get into it. You get them their foot in the door. They watch it. They go, Hey, this is the like, guy. Enjoy this. And then, mm -hmm. and then like in the dog days of summer, when really baseball is the only option in a normal, normal seat like normal type of season they people are going to be more apt to be into it instead of that kind of stereotype for being boring and and with a an extended playoff uh roster like or extended playoff like more people get in the playoffs yeah. if you're somebody that's never watched baseball you're picking a team whatever team you pick has more of a chance or if you're picking the hometown team whatever team you're you're rooting for for the first time ever has an ex increased uh chance to make the playoffs it's yep. just another incentive and another thing like, and if your team, like imagine you pick a, you pick like uh, the Cleveland Indians who we actually going to get into a little bit later. Let's say you, you're from Cleveland. You, you start rooting for the Indians and they make the playoffs the first season you're cheering for them. Yeah. That's, that's a recipe for, to make a fan for life. So I think yeah. this is a huge opportunity for the MLB here. Um, and if you, and like, if you become a Cleveland Indians fan, you think baseball is boring. Watch Francisco Lindor play. Mm -hmm. It's not boring. Oh yeah. No, these, like these athletes are just unreal. Like, and, and I think baseball is getting a little bit better. Cause I think the way, the, the way everything's going, um, the NBA is really the leader in terms of um, making the, the players, the stars, not the teams, 
right? Like, I'm really focusing on the player, like the intrigue and the storylines and the, um, like, who's your guy, basically? Who's your guy? Yeah. And I think baseball is slowly, like, becoming more and more like that. At least they're trying. That's the attempt. Yeah, but and I think failing pretty bad. They're failing so pretty bad. But at the same time, you're bringing in casual fans. That's what, that's what the casual sports fan is almost looking for these days. Um, so uh, yep. maybe, maybe this is an opportunity to really kind of um, yeah. get, get those casual fans in and really kind of double down on boosting the star power um, of the players. I'm all for it. Because, I mean, I mean, a big illustration of Madison Bumgarner going off and, and being a rodeo guy and like taking people taking pictures of him, no one recognizes him. That is, yeah, that uh, says a lot about the MLB. That says a lot about the MLB. Like there, I don't think there's any other sport that that could have happened, um, unless you're like a linebacker who's always wearing his helmet. Like it just doesn't. Even then, I you probably get noticed. Yeah, I mean linebackers, they stand out in the crowd. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, and there's so many diehard NFL fans, you get noticed. Yeah, you would no for sure, but MLB like. Mm-hmm. Uh, just doesn't seem to be able to pull it off. Um, and then teams like this, another pro, and this is comparing it to the previous reallocation plan, and it's teams not playing outside during Arizona and Florida summer, which, I, as I said, doable but rough. Um, yep. So that, I mean, and, and it's like it's nice. Another pro is if you're – like let's say you just got traded to a team, you just bought a house in um, – in wherever you just got traded to, you have, you moved your whole family there and now you're not being like, okay, honey, I have to go live in Florida or Arizona for the, for the next, for this season. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's, it's when it financial security right now is, and I mean, it's hard to say this, but these guys that make millions of dollars, but uh-huh. at the end of the day, if they're living like up to their means, I mean, it makes it a little easier on them. Yeah, no, it makes it a lot easier. Like it, um, and you keep the families together. And I mean, there's going to be travel. There's going to be a fair bit of travel. Like you're going to be like, we're talking like New York to Florida um, mm-hmm. and stuff and, and, and kind of do that across the country. Um, so that's going to be um, yep. something to think about. So, but they're kind of working on that. They're, they're apparently they got system mm-hmm. where if they have enough tests. So, so let's get into the, the cons, like still needs approval from the health experts. The yep. nerds are going to come in. And I mm-hmm. say that affectionately. Uh, the nerds really run the world, and this is we're in the hands of the nerds. What do the nerds say? Um, is this okay? It's it's kind of like asking your mom for permission to go outside um, and play with your friends. It, we have to wait on mom basically to kind of approve this. Um, there's a heavy reliance that's going to have to be on tests, testing everybody, making sure. So it's just a matter of the bottom line: can we get the tests? Are we taking the tests away from too many people in the public? yada 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 i think testing is really on the on the way up yep. um so by june i think like there's been huge sections of the economy just putting it put into re- making new tests better tests more tests so i think by june i don't think it's too tall of an order to say that we have enough tests fair enough yeah yeah um and then still fair bit of travel um which is a big problem and then also like tie into that the state in new york has been hit hardest in North America probably by this coronavirus. Yeah, I think um, that's the big question, especially with big like, question. You need the Yankees and Mets mm-hmm. to to have this work. Like they're the big, like some of the biggest markets, especially the Yankees, yeah. the big market team of the MLB. If if mm-hmm. New York is still questionable and a shit show, mm-hmm. you you can't you can't have the MLB. And, and you like, have e- to have them. And even with no fans, <laughs> the first game at Yankee Stadium after new york has been hit so hard everybody watching on tv that is a moment that is like that is like that's beyond that's bigger than sports that yep. moment no, um, in terms of people tuning in in terms of social media talking about like like the the chance for for eyes on the mlb is huge returning sports to new york yep. and that like if the if the mlb gets is able to pull off the first sporting event in new york since the coronavirus shutdown Whoever gets it, like, is huge. And, and MLB is right now the most likely candidate to get it. That's huge. That yeah. is um, – that's national news. Um, 100%. So, yes. um, yeah, it's, it's going to draw all the eyes. Mm-hmm. And, 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 like, from a business perspective, like the MLB, all the eyes mean lots of dollars in a tough time. Yeah. Yeah. So, that is um, – that's going to be huge. 
Um, and then this is, again, at the end of the day, this is just a proposal, right? That's another con, like we, there's no news yet. Um, this is just kind of, an, again, like, one of those things. Right now, it's just something for us to talk about. Like it's something that's up in the air. Mm -hmm. See if, like, like you said, see if it sticks and we're going to like, we get to talk about it, which is good for us. But so, I mean, like, I think this is probably the best proposal they've had yet. I think, yeah. it, I think it, it sounds good in theory, but once you get into the, the details of it, that like there, I think there could be some issues, but I mean, this is, I, I think if, if anything's going to work, this is the best option. Yeah. I think this is, this seems to check a lot of boxes and, uh, and, and I mean, like on the idea of these, like them just floating these plans out, um, MLB has been kind of notoriously bad at keeping themselves in the news uh, when they're not playing games and even when they're playing games sometimes, to be, to be frank. Um, and I when mean, they are in the news, it's like the Astros. Yeah. Not when it, great. Like, like it's, it's like, yeah, it's nice people are talking about it, but they're talking about like literally like an almost game breaking scandal that goes all the way to the world series. Like that's rough. Um, but now they're kind of being proactive and keeps staying in the news. Like, I mean, yeah. NHL kind of tried it. They kind of floated out, uh, I think like last week or a week, two weeks ago, they said, uh, oh, we got this plan, like a very similar to the original MLB plan with like playing in facilities in kind of, um, I don't know where, but in, in one location and we're going to start in July and continue the season. But then everything went radio silent after that. MLB yeah. is just coming out there with more plant, new plants. They're trying to, I think they're taking notes. They're putting things out there. I think the big note was it's going to be way too hot to play in Arizona yeah. and Florida. Okay. So we got to figure out a way to get everybody in their, in their team in or in their home stadiums yeah. um, and then go from there. So I think like, I don't think this is the one, but I think the next one is going to respond. Like I, we had every time, like we did these, these MLB pr proposals, we had pros and cons. And I think each time they're taking those cons, I think they're listening explicitly to big game talk and they're taking those cons and they're um, moving them. And they're kind of kicking the can down the road a little bit and coming out with a better plan. So I'm, I have full faith in Rob Manfred. I think, I think he's doing a pretty decent job in this time. Yeah. He's not bad. I mean, like, it's a lot like it's so hard for them right now that a lot of sports commissioners are doing a lot better job than I, I really would have gave them credit to do before this happened. I, I thought yeah. a lot of them would, would fold in situations like this and they, yeah. they really haven't. No, it's, it's been, it's been pretty good. The only one that really folded was unfortunately Vince McMahon with the, with the XFL. That was, that's some rough. But then, but then you look at, I mean, like his other, his WWE, baby, his WWE baby is running. Is like, running. So I like, that's a good point. I think, uh, I think the XFL, I'm just so sad. And we're just like, let's not talk anymore about the XFL for now because I'm just, enough. I just get too sad. So um, what are we getting to next year, Chris? Well, we got umpire news. Yeah, that's right. We we're coming out with umpire news. So that's how that's how you know that sports are like have gone for too long when umpire. Yeah, news we're, we're is talking like about the second thing we're talking about. Yeah. So basically, there's no now. Remember, this is coming from anonymous sources, right? In the MLB, though. But this is no official announcement yet. Um, right. But this is this is kind of getting into like this is less about the umpires, more about just like kind of day to day what baseball is going to look like if it happens in 2020. And they're talking okay. about. It's likely that replay reviews are done away with in the 2020 season because that's tough. Yeah. I, I, I understand it's tough though. Mm -hmm. Cause you have to limit the on off field personnel. Like if you have a guy in, in New York checking all the replays, that's a guy in New York, which is kind of a logistical nightmare right now. And it's also just another, the fact that but he's another guy you got to test. You can't you, and this might, like to people that know this might sound stupid, but can't you just have like a designated guy sit in his house? Yeah, that's you know that's a brilliant idea. I feel like <laughs> I like I don't see anything wrong with that. Like I guarantee there's somebody that's gonna be well. Actually, you gotta like I don't know. But yeah, uh, like the well actually is gonna come flying for this one. But I feel like just like I like Blue Jays Mets play. I am the designated replay review. I sit there and watch the game. I have like the the mm -hmm. TV thing on the side. They call me up, say review it. I look at it, call him up, say he was safe. Problem yeah. solved, MLB. Yeah, I'll well, do, okay, okay. So, yeah, no, yeah, no, 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 no. If you're going to do that, then I say we both get in a Zoom call for Mets and Jays games, and we just, like, it, it'll just be, like, cut to us screaming at each other. 
and, and then and then fans vote who won the debate. Yeah, yeah, big game talk live polls. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hold on, Joe S. The poll's almost done. Yeah. <laughs> oh, but yeah, no, that's. I mean, it makes sense. It makes sense. Mm-hmm. No, like, and, and it's it's one of those things like. The umpires low key getting like, cause I feel like if you're an umpire, this is what you want. Cause you don't like, you don't look bad when people get reverse your calls. So like the umpires are kind of, and, and, yeah, and it's, he, it's given them a lot of a leeway. I think like, mm-hmm. they've, they've had an easier time. Uh, like people, they, yeah, they don't get yelled at as much. And there's almost that ability to like the big call where you almost feel like you don't have to play it safe. You know what I mean? You can feel confident and making a big call knowing that, hey, they can just go to replay after this if I get it wrong. Yeah, exactly. So, and you're not overthinking because as soon as they start overthinking, they're going like, to make wrong, wrong mistakes. They're going to make mistakes. Yeah. Like, it's what happens in any profession, especially one where you're like, bang, you need to make a decision. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's one of the, like, that's a huge high pressure job, right? And you need to be able to think. And, uh, I, and there's got to be a lot of like old school managers. Like you see the guys behind the plate, the gray in their hair, the, the big tough guys, like they gotta be like, like they've been doing it for 10, 15, 20 years. And, and they probably like hated when the replays come in. Like, I don't need some guy like writing my calls. I've been seeing this shit for a long time. You know, like, um, it's probably split between whether the umpires like it or not, but there's a lot of old school guys definitely that are pretty happy. Yeah. Um, and the, and probably those old school guys are the ones at the top of the, of the thing. Cause they've been around and then the ones leading this, cause this came out of a, a kind of, um, uh, like kind of like a union debate with the, uh, with the yeah. league. Um, so they're talking about, um, going to get 50% of salary for may, uh, yeah. no other pay if no 20, 20 games are played. Um, and they're talking about if the, the league happens, there's what they're going to be calling a monastery set setup. So they're going to be like, um, they're putting the umps up in a controlled environment. So you basically live with all the other umps. Like it's like they're, they're monks. They, they go to the monastery. And, and what I'm thinking is you get, you get a reality TV show of it and call it like umps. And then you have like all the umps together, living together. There's lots of drama and stuff like that. Um, I, I would like- honestly, like is 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 interesting as the show would be. I would honestly probably be super helpful for them because one is going to be extra income for yeah. them in this time, and also for somebody that watches the games and you're always just like you cannot watch a baseball game if you're a baseball fan and not lip thumbs at least once. Yeah, it would add it like kind of a hu- like the actual human element to them. Yeah, and it's like the the umps you love, the umps you love to hate. You can just watch them and you just like that you could see like, Oh, that guy's a dick. And then he makes a bad call on your team. And you're just like, yeah, that guy's a dick. Like, <laughs> see, that would be, that would be like pretty... a- Angel Hernandez. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Him. Yeah. yeah see, yeah. See, He's yeah. a dick through and through. <laughs> yeah. Like I'd love to see him on reality TV so we could just roast them. Yeah. So, <laughs> so mom, umps, ML, MLB, if you're listening. Um, that is, um, mm-hmm. that's your, uh, that's free. That, um anyways so that's the big thing like it'd be interesting to see like how how like the game changes without replay you yeah. know um well, that would, i mean i think it, i think you would just fall back into what we were a couple of years ago really i don't think mm-hmm. you i don't think you like you might notice it at first honestly i don't even know if you'd notice it at first especially mm-hmm. like i think it would just flow so naturally because we were, we were so used to it for so long yeah yeah like, it almost still like i don't i would say i'm almost not fully used to having replay yet from being having not having it for so long yeah so I, think, no, I think it would be fairly easy that's fair it would go right back and like i feel like there would be a couple like they're just it wouldn't hit you right away but let's say like your your guy goes to still second you know he's safe and he gets called out like mm-hmm. you sit and think about it you're like man that would be that would be like a 20 second review like that yeah. would that guy would be back on second base like that's gonna hurt you but then like when you when it happens the flip side and, and your team gets a guy out like that's gonna feel good again like i hate yeah. i hate having an out reversed i hate like when it's when it's my side like it's just the worst feeling like um it's but so, the other way it, around is so nice yeah the other way around is so nice like just think of too if like you're a pitcher out there too like you've mm-hmm. mentally gone through okay like this has been a tough inning i got my second out 
I'm ready to go. And then you're just sitting there cooking on the mound while these like these guys just have the headphones in and, and are just waiting. You're just sitting there cooking, waiting for the result. And then boom, a guy's on – not only is a guy on second, but you have one less – like you don't have the – like – the last out to make right so it's just your your whole game plan is just going through the washing machine there yeah. um it's got to be rough so sure. maybe it's just nice for the pitchers at least um i agree we got some more mlb news we're just going to quick list off this story so indians reliever emmanuel clace has been suspended for 80 games for a ped violation now my thought who gets busted for peds during a sports shutdown uh, this are they, how are they, how are they even testing? I they, I that's the crazy thing. Like he the second the coronavirus hit and MLB was canceled, he just went back to D- Dominican Republic. So they sent somebody out to Dominican Republic to test this guy, and he got busted. Like it's just it, it's real shame. And the Indians huge losers here, unfortunately. If you're an Indians fan, because I mean they traded for Clor- they traded Corey Kluber for Clays this off season and got outfielder Delino De Shields too. So, I mean, you gave up Kluber for this guy. Um, and that's a, that's a big rip. I mean, Kluber was a huge part of your pitching rotation and you were expecting Clays. Well, here's one thing. Here's one thing too. Like how much the MLB sucks at marketing. Corey Kluber's one of the top pitchers. And when you said that, I was like, he was traded. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's Okay. That, like MLB's got a huge problem with this stuff. Um, <laughs> but anyways, Clace was expected to be a huge part of the Indians' pen. Um, if the 2020 season is less than 80 games, which is the suspension, jury's still out on whether or not suspension carries over into 2021. So this could be an 80-game suspension that I mean, lasts. of course it carries like, on. Yeah. Yeah. The, see, I think, that, I think that's the logical thing to do. And, and it's like, okay, so you – you're losing him, missing him for a season, and then you're missing him for part of the, the next season um, for an 80-game suspension. I mean, he would be back, if this was a normal season, he would be back in, like, um, August for that postseason push. You know, so that would, like, that's a big rip. That's a big loss for the for the Indians. Yeah, that's um, that. And Clays was exp- uh, scheduled to make uh, over 500000 this season. Uh, he made his debut with the Rangers in August. Uh, Clays appeared in 21 games, going two and three with a 2.31 ERA. He stuck out, struck out 21 in 23 and a third innings. So, I mean, this guy um, throws 100 miles per hour, and now we know why. Yeah, yeah, really. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's just like getting busted for steroids when like there might not even be a season. Just stupid. Dude, it's so stupid. <laughs> And the, and the thing is, like, I mean, to add kind of intrigue to this, he was injured. Like, he had, like, st- some problems with his shoulder. Oh, okay. He had that, some, that so, that, that explains, like, he was he was dealing with an injury that took him out of spring training. Um, so, he was, I guess, trying to heal up. Yeah, um, then, then like, now that you say that, it kind of made, like, if you – he probably didn't realize he was going to be tested. He'd probably, like, let me get this in me and, like, heal up. But still. Yeah. It's still, still, come on, guy. Like it's, it's a shame. Yeah. And I mean, at this point, with how good testing is, you're a young guy. You've made it. You know, you're like, you're doing well. Like, I wonder. Like, it's interesting with the injury, right? Because you, it makes you wonder: is this something that he kind of took on, added to his medical regimen because of the injury and wanting to get back on the horse, or is this the reason why um, you were so good in your debut with the Rangers last year? And we're able to be traded for, for like Corey Kluber. Yeah, I mean, if you're the Indians, hopefully it's the the first one where it's just this is how he was recovering. Yeah, because I mean, still like when you come back from that, there's still a chance. I mean, you haven't screwed everything up. When you come back, you're still. There's been plenty of players come back from a PD yeah, suspension sure. and be studs. Um, but I mean, this is very early in the career, yeah. and this is like very soon. Like you've played 21 games in the MLB, and you're already on that kind of bad list. Um, but you can you can easily come like look at somebody like Nelson Cruz. Yeah, no, that's like he was suspended, and now and now he's like the year afterwards he signed like a twenty five million dollar contract, and he's still stud. Well, I mean, look at the way A Rod has just been welcomed back into the MLB with open arms. Yeah, wasn't um, I could be really wrong in this? Wasn't Robinson Cano suspended too? Yeah. Okay. Okay. okay yeah. I didn't. I don't. Yeah. So like, I mean, he's not great, but I mean, he got the deal. So good yeah. For him. Yeah, so, you know, um, but anyways, 
you All have right. some news about yeah, so NASCAR. we haven't we we originally announced way back i want to say like episode four or five where we announced our favorite nascar driver which is still that contest is open if you haven't watched the last few episodes we're not repeating the contest but it's still open just for people mm-hmm. so check out the last few episodes but we we started talking that we want to talk about nascar more and we're not going to get too far into it but some nascar news it's back they got some cup Cup, Cup Series races coming in May with no fans in attendance. So it's only going to be at Darlington and Charlotte racetracks. I mean, it's the one sport that you can really easily come back. So none, none of the people are touching each other. Mm-hmm. But even the pit crews, I mean, for the most part, you're going to be – you could stay six feet apart. So And you could be wearing a mask and fixing the car, you know. Well, yeah, they're already wearing the helmets. <laughs> yeah, you, you're wearing the helmets. So it's like <laughs> – yeah um that's that like i mean the helmet is like ultimate protection like corona ain't getting through a nascar helmet yeah so i mean good good for them i mean they it's a good way to capitalize on some fans they've been doing the i racing so they've been capitalizing that way but Hmm. solid i'll be tuning in and the nice thing about the i racing i mean if you're a driver like it's not like you haven't been doing it I mean, it's different. Of course, the iRacing is never going to compare like fully, but it's pretty close. It's, it, out of all the simulated like sports you could simulate, NASCAR's one of the best, probably the best. So yeah. it's like you've kind of been practicing, or you've been more than practicing. You've been competing, um, yep. so you kind of have that like rhythm going it's still a little bit. It's not like I mean, MLB. If MLB was to do anything, they're going to have at least three weeks of kind of a, a little spring training or something like that. To, yeah. You have to, especially for the pitchers. Like if you're a pitcher right now, your arm's just on ice right now. You're just waiting. Um, it's got to be tough. And then just be like drop on, at the drop of the hat, be ready to pitch in, in, in competitive regular season games again. Like it's just um, – yeah. that's – I that, now the con for the for – the, reallocation to go back a second but anyways yeah, yeah. so forward. it's also good too because our, our and like the yeah, irising our guy our guy i'm not going to name him because of the contest but our guy's been real good on the mic too mm-hmm. um now moving into next ufc 249 we talked about it last week it's actually happening if you if you want to hear an interview with sam alvey who's going to be fighting on that card check out our podcast last week or the the youtube video mm-hmm. but you want to go through just kind of fight by fight Give a little preview in our pick. Yep, let's do it. So the first fight of the night, Ryan Spann versus Sam Alvey, our guy Sam Alvey. I think it's pretty safe to say here that we're squarely in the corner of Sam Alvey, and mm-hmm. we, we, I think he's going to win. Yeah, you know, and, and it's just a chance to make sports history, as we've talked about, um, yep. just kicking off, ending the, the sports shutdown with the first athletic in, endeavor we've seen in a long time, and it couldn't happen – couldn't have been given to a, a nicer guy and, yeah, a, and Sam a Alvey's going to punch Span right in that Superman logo on his chest and put him out. Yeah, um, Span is going to go for his signature guillotine, and then Sp- um, Alvey's going to be like, "No, no, no, not today!" and just knock him out. It's going to be a it's going to be a fun fight. Let's go. Um, it's it's definitely like if if any fight's not going to go to decision, I don't think this one is. So yeah. what a better way to start off the night with uh, with a knockout, you know. Hey exactly um, you know from sam alvey and then the next fight is bryce mitchell versus charles rosa uh i think like this is one of those not big names like if you're not a big ufc fan you probably don't know these names but it's it's a solid fight i i think i'll probably take bryce mitchell here mm-hmm. so i think he's a I'm, like i don't know if he's got the talent to go all the way in this in this division but i, mean, I think he's he's a solid kid he's gonna have mm-hmm. a good career and, and I think it's a good chance for, I mean, this is such a star packed card and there's a few, few people that are just, as you've said, not as big of na- group names, have yeah. them out early. There's a great chance for exposure here. Um, so you got to be super stoked to be, to have this, so, have this fight. fight. I think Mitchell too. I think, okay. I think that's pretty safe, pretty chalk bet. I think. Yeah. Um, the next one, Vin- Vincente Luque versus Nico Price. That's going to be a barn burner. Both guys' style is just to go all out. Again, here it's a chalk pick, but I think Luque wins this one. I think he's just a better fighter. And the way Nico Price, like his fight style is really exciting, but a lot of times it puts himself at a disadvantage because his chin gets stuck out there and he gets himself put out. Yeah, and if you're going up against Luque, you stick your chin out, you're done. I think this one's going to be, as you said, barn burner. Like these guys are going to go all out. This is going to be, I mean – it's going to be great. Like fans are going to be so into this, this one. Um, and 
yeah, I think Luke K is is the chalk pick, but he's I think he's the the smart answer. Yeah. The next fight is Jacare Souza versus Uriah Hall. Now this one in the betting odds is pretty close here, but I I think Jacare I think he probably wins this. I think Uriah Hall can put up a good fight. Mm-hmm. I think Jacare is just I think he's a stud. I think Jacare is one of the most kind of underrated fighters in the UFC, mm-hmm. and he's kind of a the like people constantly overlook him. I, I really yeah. don't know why. So I, I like him to win here. And, and I'm really happy, that, like you say, like he gets overlooked. I don't know why either. And, I, and I'm really happy that he has the opportunity to fight in this card. Like he's kind of been putting his dues for the UFC. And now he gets a big opportunity on a huge card to really yeah. kind of prove himself. I think this is going to be um, a card that makes a lot of guys into um, some pretty big stars with just how many eyes are going to be on this, how many yeah. new fans are going to be on this. Um, yep. If this is kind of your first introduction to UFC, um, especially the first few fights that just, I mean, I remember the first time I watched UFC, man, it just grips you from the first fight on and those guys just stay with you. Yeah, me um, and you watching UFC 217, which mm-hmm. for like, a, that was not that long ago. And, and we've kind of, after that, we dove straight into it, like all the mm-hmm. way that card just, just sucked us in. Yeah, so uh, I'm I'm excited for all the people. Like I, I have a few friends that have just never tried it out and say it's not for me. Well, now the pitch is, hey, like there's no other sport to watch. You want to you want to watch it over Zoom with us, you know? So yeah. um, it'll be it'll be interesting to see um, that happen across. I mean, the world and see how many new fans we get. Yeah. Um, um, so did I hear you take Souza there too? Yeah, I think Souza. Okay. This is really a toss up. I think um, this is really a pick 'em. In, in, in my mind. So that, that's what makes this fight so intriguing. It's so exciting. Um, I think Hall, he's a decent guy. Yep. So, um, so he has a chance, like he's a light underdog, but I think uh, anything can happen in this fight. And the next fight here is uh, Carla Esparza versus Michelle Watterson. Now Esparza is the favorite in this, but I like Michelle Watterson to win here. I think she's I think she's a stud. I think she's kind of again overlooked in the the strawweight division, and because there's so many, it's so top heavy in that division. Mm-hmm. But I, I like Michelle Waterson to get the win here. Yeah, I really. Um, this may be me betting with my heart, but I love Michelle Waterson. I think she's a just a fantastic fighter. I really like. I'm a I'm a fan, um, mm-hmm. so I'm definitely going to be rooting for her. I don't care too much for Carla, uh, so I really hope uh, Michelle. And I think this is. I think she has a chance. I think she has a good fighting chance. I think the odds reflect that. This is, again, uh, a pretty uh, pretty much a toss-up almost in terms mm-hmm. of where the odds are at. So I think this is going to be a great fight and a great moment, I think, for an opportunity for Michelle Watterson to really kind of prove herself um, yep. in front of all these all the eyes. Then the next fight is Fabricio Werdum versus Alexei Olenek. Now, this one's really interesting because Werdum's coming off the of suspension. is isn't even fought. And I believe like two years, something like that. Mm-hmm. Versus Olinick, who's somebody that like I believe his last fight was against Walt Harris, where he got put out really mm-hmm. quickly. With I mean, Walt Harris got a lot of power, not taking anything away from him, but it didn't like it wasn't a clean shot that put him out. Mm-hmm. So I think like, I I like we're doomed here. I think mm-hmm. coming off the suspension, something to prove. He's a little bit fresher. Olinick's up there in age already exposed weak chin i think we're doom takes this yeah i mean the odds like it's amazing like uh we're doom is is right now he's like minus 310 which yeah. is nuts coming off of such lo- a long suspension but at the same time as you said like uh, olenic like he's just getting old he's got that chin and uh and and we're doom is a guy who's gonna fight with a chip on his shoulder um yeah. and i 100%. think that's gonna come out and i and what a like I keep saying this, but this is like, I'm so excited for this card. Uh, and just like all these great stories. I think there's like so far and we're going to keep getting into it, but there's some great storylines behind yep. these fights. And that's what UFC is like the, the strength of UFC is the stories that, that that's, that's what sells the fight. And I think uh, we're doom is it's a great, uh, it, great narrative to see him come back after such a long suspension and basically say, I'm still here. Um, yep. What an opportunity. Next fight is Greg Hardy versus or Greg Harvey, pardon me, as for the last podcast for Chris, <laughs> versus Jorgen De Castro. Here now, I mean Greg Hardy's the favorite in this, and this one could be all just betting with my heart, but I got Jorgen De Castro to win by decapitation. Yeah, no, Greg, like Greg, 
he needs to just get schmucked. And, and this is like, if you're like a sports fan who doesn't really watch UFC and you're watching this for the first time, you know who Greg is. Um, how yeah, if awesome you don't know who he is, just do a Google search for Greg Hardy and you'll go, wow, what a piece of shit. Yeah. And you'll be like, I'm tuning in to see this guy get mocked. Like, yeah. um, and I'm putting the house on him getting mocked. And Greg uh, Hardy is lost in the UFC, but he hasn't really gotten like destroyed. Mm-hmm. And that's why, like, I think the like the UFC. I don't know why they keep putting him out there. Put him out there against somebody like Derek Lewis, who's just going to knock his head off. That's going to sell tickets better than oh. him going out there fighting like average people. No, that's like exactly like kind of say okay, like here here's how it is when when somebody who's not your size picks on you. You know, like it's one yeah. of those situations, exactly. um, and and that's great great television right there um now the next fight here is i believe this is the opener for the main mm-hmm. card so this is when the i mean this is when ufc 249 really picks up you got anthony pettis versus donald Cerrone. so no of note here this fight's at welterweight as both of them have fought lightweight extensively in their careers mm-hmm. so this is at welterweight it's a rematch of a prior fight that they had years ago i mm-hmm. mean this is for for pure mma fans I mean, this is one of the best fights on the card. Mm-hmm. Cowboy versus Pettis. I, Cowboy, for me, he's he's my second favorite fighter. Other than mm-hmm. George St. Pierre, he's he's up there for me. So mm-hmm. I, I, I got Cowboy winning this, especially on a, after kind of not being, like, honestly embarrassed by Conor mm-hmm. McGregor. So I, I like Cowboy to come back here and win. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. Like, my heart's, like, just telling me Cerrone's going to win this. I love Donald Cerrone like you. And, mm-hmm. and I really love this fight at, at 170 because, I mean, first off, you have shorter notice for this fight. Like, this card came together, like, what, like three weeks ago? I think we were starting to hear murmurs about yeah. it. Yeah. So you have less time to, to, for, your weight, for your camp and your weight cut. So I think these both, got, both guys really benefit um, from fighting at, with a little bit more, less of a weight cut and a little bit more kind of oomph behind your punches. Um, they're going to be healthier. They're going to be – their punches are going to be harder. I mean, it's it's a great matchup. I mean, if you have a light heavy – someone who's usually light heavy weight or uh, lightweight, lightweight. Yeah. Uh, against a welterweight um, who's like a natural welterweight, then it's kind of a mismatch. But if you have two guys from from heavy or lightweight move up to welterweight, I think it's really great. I think I loved seeing – I mean, it was a shame Cowboy uh, kind of fell flat, but it was great to see Connor and him duke it out at 170. Yeah. Um, so I think this is a great chance uh, again for Cowboy to do a little bit better and have somebody guy guy with some history. So I think this is a great way to start off the main card. Um, I'm, sure. I'm I, and like you said, yeah, it's it's if you're a pure MMA fan, uh, yeah. this is this is one you're really excited about. Yeah, like everybody loves Cowboy. So like I like for me, I've always liked Cowboy. I mean, when me and you saw him live at UFC Ottawa with Brock, like it was. I, I, that's when I really he became one of my favorite fighters when he starched I Quinta. Yeah, I, I, is that around the time that he became one of your favorites? Too? Oh, for sure. Seeing him live was super, super amazing. And and just like the cowboy hat and the poncho, and he's got danger with him on in the octagon. He's such a cool guy. Yeah. Uh, he's such a like he's got this swagger to him that if you're if this is your first time watching UFC and and you watch Cowboy Cerrone start off the main card by by knocking out um pettis and then put on a poncho put on a cowboy hat have his baby on his shoulder the baby's name danger too baby's name danger with joe rogan interviewing him you're a usc fan for life like that is off the charts cool so i think this is a like and, and cerrone is such a staple in the ufc on such an historic, important card, you had to have Cerrone fight. And Cerrone's probably been dying during this time, during this shutdown, because he's a guy that just lo- – like, he, he's just notorious because he takes every any, – any time, anywhere, I'm going to fight. And, of course, on this card that's being kind of thrown together and it's got all these stars, of course you got to have Donald Cerrone on there. So I'm yeah. so excited to see him. It's going to be unreal. And then the next fight – it, it's kind of overlooked fight probably, but mm-hmm. Calvin Qatar versus Jeremy Stevens. And again, too, this one, if you're not a big MMA fan, you might not like Calvin Qatar's name doesn't jump off the page for you. Yeah. Jeremy Stevens, you probably heard of, honestly, he's ever since that one press conference with McGregor, he's got such a bad rap. Mm-hmm. But these guys, again, they're going to throw down. I think here, 
I like Qatar to win. I think he's he's a young stud. Steven's a little bit up there in age. So I, I like Qatar to win here. It shows that he's a big betting favorite. Mm-hmm. But I think, it's, again, it's a really good fight. Yeah, I think it's going to be a great fight. I think Chalk Pick is my pick as well for this one. Qatar, I think, takes this one. But it's going to be a throwdown. And it's a great kind of thing to put um, in, in more of the heart of this main card. Is this, are we, we've made about nine picks. Are we, have we picked the same one for each, every single one? Yeah, I think so. I think we're pretty. That's that's the first time that we've went this long agreeing. Yeah, no, this is, this is unreal. Like, and and low key, like we might finish it off. (laughs) I I feel like, I feel like we are. Cause I I think as we get kind of work our way up, I I think these get a little bit more predictable in my opinion. Like um, Nganu versus Rosenstruck is the next one. I mean, this is number one contender for heavyweight fight. Two guys that just throw haymakers. Mm-hmm. I, but I got Nganu here. I think he's on look like he had that little bit of a dip in his career. Mm-hmm. And he's on an absolute resurgence right now, putting everybody out. I, I like Nganu here. And Nganu, what a storyline. What a career, really, like um, behind this guy. And if it ends here it'd be such a shame. I want him to win so bad. I want him to go for that, um, for that belt, because what, a, what a just progression of this guy's life. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so, and, and it, like, it's such a cool story. Like it's got to happen. It's one of those things. Like, it's almost like one of the, like the gods, the fate, like fate is decided that Nagano is on the way up. And that's yeah. how I think this is. And I can't wait to see him back. Yeah. And you can almost throw the interim heavyweight championship on this. Cause it's for the number one contender. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. The next one, a really interesting fight. You got Henry Cejudo versus Dominic Cruz for the Bantamweight Championship. Now, the last time Dominic Cruz fought in the UFC, something like four years ago, like Adesanya wasn't in the UFC yet. Ronda Rousey was still in the UFC. Brock Lesnar was still in the UFC. Like there was a whole bunch, like it's been so long. And like this is the this is the age old debate, like is Ring Rust a thing? And yeah. Dominic Cruz already proved in his career that it's not. Mm-hmm. And I, I, you know what? I, I like Cruz in this fight. Really? Yeah. Really? Okay. We just disagree because I think Cejudo is just like I think he's the staple of that division right now. Like he's he's the guy. Uh, I think he's cool, calm, collected. Like he he's not gonna like he whether no matter what the situation is, his brain is always in the same zone. I think uh, he's going to, Cruz is going to come in. He's going to have a lot of butterflies in his stomach. He's going to be having a lot of thoughts in his head. Like he's going to be, there's going to be so much riding on this for Cruz. So who does going to come in? Like it's just another day at the office. And I think so going to come off the champion. Like I, I think the complete opposite. I think Cruz in this, or sorry, Cejudo in this triple C shit. I think he talks way too much. He's going to get in his own head. You know what I mean? He's not completely focused on it where Cruz is walking into this. Like, look at, I've been the champ before. I've been I've been off for years because of injury. Came back and became the champ again. I'm like here I am. I'm fucking doing it again. I'm gonna walk in. I'm gonna go down to business. I'm gonna get shit done. And he's gonna walk out there the champ. I don't know. I and don't like forget Cejudo. too. Like don't forget too. This is only Cejudo's third fight at bantamweight. That's true. But it's still. I mean, like he 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 just killed killed Dillashaw. Actually, no, this yeah, is his second fight because Dillashaw, yeah, Dillashaw was, at never Dill- was at flyweight. So, I mean, I just I just like – I mean, Cejudo is just really in a good spot in his career right now. Um, like, he's taking out some big names, and I think uh, I think you got to go with the king here. But that's just me. I really like – I may be biased. I'm betting with my heart. I mean, it's it's still the chalk bet. It's still – like, Cejudo is still the chalk bet here. Uh, and at four years is a long time, Brad. That's a I don't long. Know, I, time. I I I like Cruz in this fight. I like and, and I mean, what a hell of a story that'd be though. If you if you, yeah, it's, it's a great story. It's a great story, no doubt. But four years is like this. This sport has changed changes so fast. I don't know. Like you, you've been talking about, like I mean, Obama was in office when this guy last fought. Like, come on, it's been it's been I, forever. I, I, I like Cruz here. It's been and, forever. And then we the, we, and the, we jinxed it. We said that we maybe we're gonna all agree. <laughs> and then we disagree right away porky uh, pine head is gonna win trust yeah. me yeah i'll shout out brock with the nickname there this is this is why Sahudu refused your cameo because yeah yeah you. brock if you're listening i tried to get a cameo from Sahudo for your birthday because he's one of your favorite fighters and it timed out so 
you, you're not getting a birthday gift i'm sorry yeah i kind of i guess maybe you wanted to keep that secret i shouldn't have brought up the cameo no no no, no, no i know so brock i know brock listens come um, on Sahudu, come on like <laughs> yeah, yeah we may, wanted may, to. maybe that maybe that maybe that's why i picked cruz to win yeah may, yeah okay maybe brad wanted you to refer to yourself as pork divine head but still, come on, have a sense of humor. It's Brock's birthday. Like, please. I know you got to fight in Jacksonville. Like, you got to get to Jacksonville. You're busy. But come on. Like, just like, take five minutes. Record Brad a message. Um, the, and then the, the main event is for the interim lightweight championship, Tony Ferguson versus Justin Gaethje. And as much as I'd love to sit here and be like, I think Justin Gaethje's got a good shot. Ferguson, I think, walks away with this fairly easy. The only thing that makes me think that this Gaethje could win is the fact that the, the MMA gods just do not want a Khabib-Tony fight. And if Gaethje wins, it kind of ruins that. That's but, a great point. Okay, now we're bringing the MMA gods into this. And, it's yeah, you just blew this whole thing open. I'm like, actually, that's a great point. I mean, like, this is part of the curse. Um, I mean, now, okay, here's the situation, right? Let's, let's say Tony wins, beats Gaethje, all right? And then they schedule in a year from now, Tony and Khabib are going to fight, right? Now. A year? Or it, it's going to be like September. September. Let's say September. Okay, we already had one near world-ending pandemic. That's that obviously was just created to stop Tony and Khabib from fighting. So if, if the MMA gods just put in like made coronavirus a thing and that didn't stop it, and they're still having it in September. The next thing they're going to try could end the world. Yeah. It's either going to be fight. asteroid hits or aliens if they yeah. try to do, because what would that be? Number six. Yeah. That'd be number six. Like no, so, six or five. No, six. Yeah. Six. six. Yeah. Six. This is number five right now. So like, I mean, maybe, if Justin Gaethje beats Tony Ferguson, the world is saved because then that fight's not going to happen. So, I mean, th- like Justin Gaethje has a position it, like to be a hero here, save the world. You know, that mm-hmm. is, have you thought about that? I mean, it's good. It's a good way to put it. Yeah. So um, Justin Gaethje, like, I think, I mean, Tony Ferguson has been preparing for a fight around now. I know it's been delayed a little bit, but since the Khabib stuff has been announced, like he's yeah. been, he's had a full camp, uh, an extended camp. Yeah. And Gaethje, um, now, of course, like when this was originally supposed to happen in mid-April or something like that, and then it got moved back to May now, yeah. you get a little bit more time if you're Gaethje, but still, I mean, Tony has the leg up in terms of, uh, of getting ready for this fight. Yeah. Um, and I mean, all jokes aside, too, like, I think you give them both a fair training camp and everything. I think Tony still wins this fight. Yeah. And, and he's I, just simply a better fighter. And I, and I think Tony is the kind of guy who travels to the beat of his, his own drum. And I think not having fan like the, the experience of fir- like your first fight in the UFC with no fans, I feel like this is Tony's element. Like he's going to be like, there's kind of a street fight, fight element to this. Like it's mano a mano. And that's when Tony just puts the eggs in your head. It's just you and me, kid. Like, um, Tony's a legit psychopath. Yeah. Tony's a, like, so if anyone's going to adjust properly to not fighting without the, the fans cheering, it's going to be Tony. He's going to like, he's going to turn it to his advantage, I think. And also the training by himself. Mm-hmm. Training. Like, he's training by himself. So he's not getting that positive affirmation from coaches and stuff. He's just their shadow boxing. He, yeah. This is his, this is his zone. This is his element. Like, yeah. So I, I think, like, I think Tony takes this here. I, yeah, I think I think you're right. Oh, so see the world. Yeah, yeah. So basically, yeah, um, Tony's gonna win. The world's gonna lose. Essentially, come September when the world ends. And uh, and now, like next week, we'll get into I think next episode where we're gonna be able to do a recap. We're actually gonna be able to recap some live sports news for the first time in that's forever. not WWE boneyard match. Yeah. But uh, so, and then we'll also be able to get into uh, a little bit of analysis of some of the fights coming up. A friend of the program, Eric Anders, is taking on Christoph Jotko. And we actually, we talked to him about that fight like way back when it was originally supposed to happen. So make sure you check that out mm-hmm. on our YouTube. So, but we'll get into some of those fights. And uh, now, do you want to, we'll uh, call up the Phoenix fan of the week for the sports hypotheticals? 
Let's call up the Phoenix fan of the week, Roberto Gavin. Come on down. All right, we'd like to welcome Roberto to the program. Great friend of me and Chris's. And before we get into the sports hypothetical, it's brought to you by Phoenix Fit. They're formulated by athletes for athletes. Their mission is to provide fuel for greatness. They're built for strength, engineered for endurance, and designed for recovery. Their supplements provide the necessary fuel to help you rise from the ashes. And every time a purchase is made at phoenixfit.com, that's spelled fnxfit.com, a child in need receives one gallon of clean water, and to date, they've donated over 103,825 gallons of clean drinking water. So you can find the link in the description for phoenixfit.com. Use their promo code BGT15 for 15% off your purchase. And they have like supplements, like gear, this water bottles from them. They got some great stuff. So make sure you check it out. And congratulations to Roberto. You're the Phoenix Fit Fan of the Week. And we got a sports hypothetical question for you to, to answer here. Oh, I'm ready. So, so if COVID-19 lasts for a full calendar year, all sports are canceled, but you could magically choose one event to happen as normal. Like all the fans, everything happens as normal. Which sports event would you want it to be? The one question I have to ask before I go into it is, are we talking about everything sports, like whatever one I choose, it resumes from this period, or are we talking fresh new season for the whole season? No, 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 like one event, like one event. So yeah. like, let's say you choose. No, no, I know, I understand that. I'm just, uh, if I were to pick my one event, does it continue from where, if the season was halfway done? Yeah, we so mean, if, like if you pick the like NHL finals, like yeah. what like what teams are in the finals you no, know is no, i it... mean like would it the season start from... no, no 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 so like let's say you pick the nba finals just like that's like the idea that you get to see like you don't know All the right. teams or whatever yeah yeah no i just want to know if you were doing it from like where the season ended no yeah or... yeah it's, it's mm-hmm. just magically the one event <laughs> all right yeah no um yeah no i'd still pick the nba finals like i feel just as for what we did last year we at least deserve a chance to see what we can do in the playoffs considering the Raptors record were still about the same without Kawhi so that's an interesting answer to go from like a fan's perspective like you want to defend your championship there yeah but another thing is is like it's a seven game series if there's only one to watch for the year like sure Super Bowl is one big event but after that what what are you gonna watch it's one game you have nothing that like once it's done it's over that's it then Fair enough. That's See that. Uh, my choice, I I had the I had the Super Bowl picked. I think that is like the premier sports event. That's why I look forward to it every year. Oh, I do too. That, that like that's that's what I'm picking. I want I want to see the Super Bowl, and it's a spectacle too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, but it's only like, one game. Roberto has a great point here. That that is a great point. That, like, is, that is a great point. So like, I was going to pick the it, Super Bowl too, but that uh, that's what I was thinking is there's only once you watch it that's it like Mm -hmm. at least this can be interesting like three if it goes to game seven yeah i would say though if if i want to pick a series though i'd pick i'd pick hockey i'd pick the nhl finals if if i wanted if i had to pick a series that's fair yeah Yeah. 100 percent fair what do you got chris i got so i i I had a tough time picking all right first i was thinking you gotta have the great cup you gotta have the great cup like that's just a staple just joking not the great cup anything but the great cup and then i was thinking you know how sick would it be to have an xfl finals game just to ha- just to say we had an xfl finals right i'm changing like- my pick i'm changing my pick <laughs> xfl finals and that that's not bad because it's like that unanimous then we all yeah, said like yeah, I, I don't <laughs> think so because i think you got it like vince mcmahon yeah, it's pretty sad that the XFL got shut down halfway through the season thanks to coronavirus. Like, you never really got your chance. But this is like the swan song. Like, you have one chance, one special night to really <laughs> put on a show for everybody. Um, put that kind of in the history book for the XFL take two. Um, that would be huge, I think. Like, a really nice special thing to have for all these players, too. You know, all these yeah. young players that, like, a lot of them aren't going to hit the end nfl this was their one chance of kind of touching the pros a little bit yep. like this is like the prom you know you missed out on the prom you know so uh have that special night for them another idea i had this this like was you my already, original you already idea. aced it with the xfl yeah okay get here? ready because i'm about to ace it again all right um so you have 
and this could be any sport, right? You have an all-star game and, and I know you're going to groan because the all-star game, nobody tries. It's all for show, like all that, like it's not great sports wherever you go. Right. But here's the pitch, right? You tell the players, you say, look, there's not going to be any more sports if for another year. So if you get hurt going all out in this game, you have a year to recover. So, and then you just throw out a prize or something like that. Make them really want to win. And imagine all the superstars of one sport going all at it. it but one it's, game. It, Chris, it's still an all-star game. It's like there's literally no wrong answers here. And you picked the wrong answer. <laughs> like, Roberto, what do you think about that stupid decision? <laughs> I'd say, though. So. The what the NBA did with their new rules made it a lot more competitive. For but sure. is that the one sports event you want to watch all year? Oh, no, 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 that's not what I'm watching. <laughs> yeah, yeah, hey, but cool, but, very cool. I agree with you. There's a lot of cool things in the world, but it's not going to be my number one. No, but no. Uh, but you get like you, you're not just getting two teams, you're getting the stars from all the teams. You know, if you're only going to see them once for a whole year, you know, I you might see, as well get I want to see a, a championship see needs to be put on the line, up. though. Yeah, like, I want to <laughs> like it's it's a matter of there's this trophy on the line, one team's going home just to go home, exactly. Like, yes. that's, okay, but, what if what if you raise the stakes? The way it is. What if you say, what if you say winners get to stay in the league, losers have to retire? <laughs> Well, for the All Star Game, yeah, let's get rid of half the best <laughs> players in the like, league. <laughs> but then there would be stakes. Chris, 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 you, you're just <laughs> digging a big deeper hole. Right? <laughs> <laughs> hey, you brought in you. This is a yeah. plant. Roberto's a plant. You just brought him in to, to just hate on whatever I said. Well, here's the thing: is like you you put you had the best choice available with the XFL as the premier XFL podcast. And then you just ruined it with your All Star game. <laughs> okay, so, we'll stick XFL All Star game. <laughs> See, <it>? Roberto <laughs> scratching his chin. He's like, hmm, that's uh, but is I, there I, any All Stars <laughs> in that league? <laughs> oh my! Oh wow! 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 Roberto, you're a guest on the podcast. Come, Come on. on now. This no, is our no, home. That up to the comparable of like where? Yeah. We no. Play. No. You're, you're very you're, right. You're, you're very. Right. You're incredibly right. All right. Well, on that note, congratulations, Roberto, on being the Phoenix fan Thanks. of the week. Thank you for coming on. Everybody, make sure you check out fnxfit.com, promo code BGT15, 15% off your purchases. Thanks for listening to the podcast. Make sure you check us out on YouTube, Spotify, iTunes. The, the links are in the description for whatever you were listening on for the other stuff. And uh, you can follow us on Instagram. Twitter at Big Game Talk or send us an email biggametalk at gmail.com Yeah, and have a great week everybody, stay safe and thanks again Roberto Thanks for having me boys